Hi everyone and welcome back to Brand 2020. Today is July 25th, 2017. It is payday. Here on Brand 2020, we like to examine and explore different windows that give us a sense of what the brand is of Japan, what kinds of things we can characterize the Japanese nation or the Japanese people as, so it helps us understand this country much better. I'm joined with my co-host, Dr. Nancy Snow. Hello, Tim. Propagandist in chief. Thank you very much, I'll take it. I worked for a propaganda agency mm -hmm. and it was propagandizing America's image in the world. And Japan now is uh, really- uh, Tar Your target of affection? Uh, it is my target of affection and we're three years out from 2020. So we've been doing these episodes looking at how Japan is preparing its public face globally. Right. And we have a great example now with a couple of celebrities going after each other. Right. Apparently, uh, uh, it's not a failed actress, uh, an actress who is basically retired. Mm. She's been married to a very famous for maybe 17, 20 years mm. uh, actor, and they've run into a bit of a spite. And the reason why this is interesting to us for branding purposes is the way that this has been escalated. Right. Well, one, this is a woman uh, who went global with this, and the name of the video is The Truth, and she speaks in English, so she's using a script, but she immediately goes after her husband for his adultery with her best friend, and then she really starts punching below the belt, and I mean literally, because she talks about his use of a hundred milligram Viagra, which I guess isn't even allowed I never in use Japan. it that much. You know, it's <laughs> it's way too much for me. Well, we get information about her best friend who lives in Hawaii. She doesn't name her. She doesn't even name her husband. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's clear. She even says that he has fake hair. I guess he has hair transplants. But mm -hmm. it's curious because Japan. <laughs> Yes, would you clear, you do not have, <laughs> yeah. no, and no, I don't Only either. the mustache is fake. This is real. So, um, Your hair is gorgeous, by the way. Thank you, but it's very intriguing to me because this, you have to ask yourself, why do this? Uh, this is not a country that traditionally would air its dirty sure. laundry the way that, say, the United States did in the 60s with Ed Murrow as the head of USIA. It was always about telling America's story warts and all. Mm -hmm. Japan is the picture of politeness and refined uh, service and being reserved. And so now you have this sort of venomous sure. attack. And so far, I don't know what he's doing to defend himself. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's just lying low. But does this really make her look sympathetic? I'm right. not so sure. Most of our foreign viewers won't know who Kazuyo Matsui is, but she's a an actress who is basically retired and um, the, the, the reason why this is important to us is because normally you wouldn't see this on, mm. on Japanese television or, right. or using, actually, it's been called weaponizing social media sure. to get her dig in. Well, you know, I wrote a book called Japan's Information War. So what I wrote about had to do with Japan in competition with South Korea and China and its narrative to and the world. And polishing their brand and, and, and promoting and it, right? And also presenting a very good image. Uh, and, and you want to have a good, clean image. And this is so down and dirty. And she isn't one who's really, she's not known to me, but I, I don't know how many followers she had. But she may have also used English because of the girlfriend. She wanted to make sure that this went viral in the United States. Mm -hmm. and as an effort to really shame both of them. But it's interesting when you watch the video, there's sort of a part two where she goes into all the wealth that she has and that she patented. She's, she's ramping this up. You know, she, she hasn't received her, 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 um, her goodies yet. Well, and not only that, I, I think she shows signs of having been coached a bit. And Japan is often criticized for not being particularly strong with PR mm -hmm. and marketing or even personal branding. So she's made a decision that her personal brand will be that of the victim, of the, of the wife who is being attacked uh, by her best friend, by a husband who doesn't care about her. She said she's been with him a long time, 16 years or more. And also she said she wants to protect her assets. Mm -hmm. She says that they're going after her for financial gain. The problem with this, there's a gender dynamic here. Uh, when a woman puts herself in this light, yeah, victimhood is one thing, but when you are sort of going on the offensive, this can backfire. Right. I mean, initially, people might be intrigued it's by it, what, which maybe. is why right. it's getting a lot of clicks. Mm -hmm. But the more you sort of think it through, I really thought 
why wasn't this handled privately and with your lawyers? I mean, what's the point of all of this right. other than that it's kind of titillating to the public's eyes? But I don't think it'll be really an example that many others will follow because this is not a place where people want to bring a lot of individual uh, reputation breakers to, to their name. Well, this is brand 2020. So why don't we use this as a springboard to talk more generally about you know, the current state of affairs with women in Japan and married women or unmarried women or how women are, are acting in, in relationships because a lot of things that you would not have considered about Japanese women 15, 20 years ago, now, it, I mean, it's the dynamic has completely changed. There's a power shift going well, on. Well, there that's the case here. And this is a woman who's about 60, and I think she would have married this actor in her mid-40s. Mm -hmm. She already had her own personal wealth, right. her own economic power. This is a very new image for a woman in Japan. Um, in the post-war generation, women were much more economically dependent on men and the salary man. And mm -hmm. in this case, this is a woman who is taking charge of her own power, and she's also willing to stake her reputation on the line. This is something that women have not been allowed to do, mm -hmm. even worldwide until recently. We've got a lot of women's conferences taking place. There was just another one All over the, the weekend, yeah. uh, the International Women in Business Conference. And you see a lot of these women leaders, and they are many of them are really making it on their own terms and mm -hmm. without perhaps family or in a, in a marriage situation. So what it's giving women is a sense of choices to make, but I, I'm not sure if this sort of story narrative is the, is the choice that they want to, to cling to as mm -hmm. a great example for women. Because you always have that tension here in Japan of this ideal of a woman as the ultimate feminine right. Uh, role model that she's this the caregiver, uh, the domestic right. engineer extraordinaire. She's a great cook. She can clean well. She can take care of her family. She takes care of the finances mm -hmm. for the family. But that image of women now is shifting, and it's sort of following the universal example or the Western example of a woman just standing on her own terms. Right. Uh, but I really believe, though, that that women should still hold on to their femininity and, mm -hmm. and a certain reserve. I'm not sure if going on the offensive like this right. is, is the way to go. It's I a, wouldn't have advised it. It's but. a double-edged sword though, isn't it? We had Rui Matsui, an uh, upper house member from Osaka on Brand 2020 a couple of episodes ago. And she's raising two kids and she's in the House of Counselors. And one of the, the comments that she made was, it's just really busy. That's right. And just because she's in the upper house doesn't relinquish her from her obligations of raising the family and cooking dinner and taking care of her husband and the house and, and that sort of thing. So, gosh, it must be awful tough for women who have to do the women stuff in addition to what now is the men stuff too. Because usually for the men, the men executives, they have a wife at home, That's they right. have th their suits are pressed, they wake up in the morning, they take a shower, they get to the work, right. they don't put on their makeup. Mm -hmm. right? It's just a completely different dynamic. Well, and I think the way that Rui Matsukawa was describing it, it was, it was something where a lot more women could relate to that. In this case, this woman isn't quite as relatable. One, I'm not sure if the actresses or the actors in Japan are held in sometimes the, the highest sort of role model regard because, and, and also this woman talks about how wealthy she is mm -hmm. and that she has obvious a lot of probably help or staff or people to advise her on how to even present herself in, a, in an SNS You wouldn't version. notice it though. I mean, she's all black and- Well, that's and, intentional yes, though. That, right? That's no to makeup. look like she's a mourning figure and to really generate more sympathy, but it's very manipulative. Sure. It's so easy to see through that. Mm -hmm. And you don't go for the sympathy card by talking about how well off you are and that they just want part of my wealth. The other thing that really strikes me about this is that it's so vengeful, isn't it? Yeah. And um, we see this kind of vengeance in, in a lot of different areas of Japanese society. For example, in a divorce situation, and this happens a lot to foreigners, foreigners come out on the, the wrong end of this, where there, there might be one or two children and the family gets into a bit of a spat mm. and the wife decides she's going to leave and go visit mom. Mm -hmm. And one thing turns to another and she keeps the children mm. and she refuses to allow the husband 
to see the children. And for Japanese men, this is part of the culture, it's part of the history, they understand it, they've, they've heard about this be before. But for foreigners to come in, especially with foreign fathers who have, been, who have grown up maybe in a, a very religious culture, to have a, a wife take your child away and refuse for you to let them see it, it is just out, outside of comprehension. But it happens here, and not only does it happen here, but that kind of philosophy that the woman can do that and prevent the husband from seeing the children is supported by the family courts, by the police, by you know the Japanese government as well. So these, these fathers who want to see their kids after they've had a fight with their wife or some sort of a, a, a domestic problem, they can be effectively prevented from seeing their children until they, they reach the age of 21 years old. And, and that story has gone somewhat global too, and I suppose it's really playing into maybe that idealized version of the woman that the, the child rearing here in Japan is still almost the exclusive domain of the woman. Mm -hmm. So even in a, in a very uh, terrible divorce situation, the children will automatically go with the woman. It's almost like there's there's no debate about that. But, but the, the point I'm trying to make is that apparently there's a switch that goes off where they just become vengeful. Right. I, I don't understand why it is necessary to prevent the father from ever seeing the child again mm. because you said you were going to stay with me forever and take care of me forever and you didn't. Mm. So switch off. You're mm -hmm. gone. You're not important and I'm going to punish you. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, right. I, I think, something that's an well, example of this, this celebrity mean, fight. This is sort of an ongoing debate about what is gender empowerment because women coming into more material gain, they're going to maybe be in situations where there's more material value than placed on even human beings. Right. So not just on accruing uh, some brand name bag or shoes or clothes, but rather even children become a bit of a commodity. That's and that's you know right. in post-war Japan, it, the the wealth was initially on the society at large, and the family was still very much a nuclear family. Mm -hmm. You see this in the in the Ozu and the Kurosawa films, right. and then we see that breakdown of the family, and now it's sort of the individual and his or her gain, and the, and the children become pawns in this. But I do think that there's a materialistic element to a lot of this. Well, you see that a lot. I mean, the, the Japanese women are so brand conscious. I mean, all of the brands in the world must be in Japan because right. the Japanese are, are really uh, consumers of the, the bags, the watches, the, the suits. But I think that was created. I don't think that was in their DNA. I think that really came out of this uh, Japan economic miracle. Mm -hmm. And perhaps in a way, it was a way to keep women more pacified for a while, was to give them this, this notion of their value through material things. And that kept them in their place somewhat. Maybe I'm being too philosophical. No, I don't know. But now as women are starting to make their own money and they can buy their own things, uh, you bring then children into it, there's going to be more wealth shifting over to where mm -hmm. the children reside. Right. And also these women too, they're coming out of family homes where they, they stay longer in the family home than the young man would. He's right. going off and he's still sort of following that old style model mm -hmm. of the cradle to grave uh, company type security. Whereas she's getting very, she's staying very close to the parents. Right. And so you bring grandchildren into the mix, where are the grandchildren going to end up? But mm -hmm. I'm very sympathetic, though, to these these husbands who who lose their children abruptly. I don't think there's and, a law firm in in Tokyo mm. that hasn't handled one of these cases. Right. I mean, they are so frequent. A domestic dispute, and then the wife disappears. It's almost always the wife disappears mm. uh, with the kids, and mm -hmm. then that's used as a leverage for you know monthly payments, maybe visitation, but usually the vi visitations are very very skinny. Mm. And uh, they usually, you know, uh, breach the agreements for visitation in any event. But I mean, the link here is to a woman who's again acting rather vengefully online, maybe trying to get sympathy, but I mm -hmm. don't see a lot of sympathy there. So because she's kind of firing the well, first it, shot it, in her. Yeah husband, or maybe soon-to-be-divorced husband, he's been rather quiet. I guess he's, in the gossip pages, they've said he's been most bothered by her calling his hair fake. Right. Right. Well, I'd be upset, too. But th they are going after her, too, for, mm. for brand damage, right. for diminution of, of his, his brand and his sure, name. Sure, sure. So they're, they're 
putting papers together for that. But it does suggest that Japan is really getting on this bandwagon now of personal branding. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm very big on that, but you have to really control your own narrative. And this is a big risk for her. Maybe she feels as if now she's a businesswoman and part of her brand image will be somebody who fought for what right. she felt was right. And she could end up being a speaker at women's conferences sure. for all I know, or maybe a book will come out of it. Uh, you can certainly use uh, uh, bad publicity to, yeah. to to gain a lot materially. Well, here's the other issue. Perhaps it is that women are now finding themselves in a male kind of role, mm. and so they act as they think maybe they would act if they were a man, and perhaps overshooting That's or right. over over emphasizing certain aspects of it. Because I don't know if a, a man would do the same thing that she's doing. Well, I don't think so. And, you know, it, it, it put this in a context with Hillary Clinton because there was an article recently about how her favorability has dropped mm -hmm. again. And it Losing the to, presidency does that, yes, though. Yes, <laughs> and also the fact that she was kind of blaming everybody but herself. And it was, you know, I tweeted about it because I said, okay, is this really this double standard for women? And in a way it is. I think that mm -hmm. women need to yeah, recognize right. yeah. that, that... If you take this kind of risk, you may pay twofold for it. So you have to really think it through. It doesn't mean you have to sit demurely and, and just keep your head down. I mean, this woman could have taken action publicly, but done it in a manner maybe with a blog or a sit-down interview that was a little bit more professionally done. Mm -hmm. It was just a rather bizarre video. And even, even her, uh, you know, there was no funniness or anything to it, but it still kind of took off because people felt like they were looking through a window into somebody's home. Right. And as you know, here in Japan, you don't get to look into, right. you don't get to even go into somebody's home very right. rarely. So sure. people keep their dirty business to themselves well, until the a tabloid takes off. She even said the reason why I'm acting is because the tabloids were running with the story mm -hmm. and she felt like she wanted that control back. But yeah. It's a it's a two-edged sword here. Well, also, I mean, it's not just the dirty laundry. It's the clean laundry, too. I mean, you can live in one of these large apartment houses. They're called mansions here. And not even know who your neighbors are. You can live there for four or five years and right. really not have much of a relationship. You have a relationship with people that you work with or that you meet on the streets. But the people that live next door, no, it's kind of... You keep your distance. And you do that, too, because it's so crowded. And so you want to give people that distance, that, that privacy that, right. bubble that uh, is is so really hard to come by yeah, here. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's a level of respect or politeness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brand 2020, we look at a lot of issues that help us describe what it's like to live in Japan or how Japan wants to project itself to the outside world. A lot of interesting stories here. Please stay tuned. We're going to examine some more.